Hi, uh, this is Dr. Lokesh Lingappa working as pediatric neurologist at Rainbow Children's Hospital Hyderabad. Today we will briefly talk about encephalitis or encephalopathy. Encephalopathy is a term used when somebody loses consciousness. So it can be varying severity, somebody is mild encephalopathy, they might be able to localize if you give a painful stimuli they might take off your hand or somebody might be in deep coma. So the degree of encephalopathy might vary. What are the reasons, how does it happen? If you have a diffuse brain involvement, you lose your consciousness or something called if thalamus, both the sides thalamus, if they are involved, you can lose your consciousness or some uh, ascending reticular activating system. So this is another uh, area of the brain which actually maintains your awareness. If it is affected, you lose your consciousness. So there are many reasons for this. If somebody loses consciousness very suddenly within a matter of few minutes, then you are looking at causes like something like trauma that is injury or a toxin, a drug a overdosage or another toxins which you have ingested or if there is a bleed in the brain that can cause significant raised pressure immediately that can make you lose consciousness and if there is a blockage to particular part of the brain that is a posterior circulation what we call as these are the situations where you lose your consciousness very early. So, the reasons for encephalopathy is easier to know depending on how quickly the child went into encephalopathy or lost consciousness. Whereas if the child loses consciousness, he has fever, next day he starts losing consciousness slowly and then goes into deeper states of altered sensorium, then you are looking at infection as a likely cause. The infection of the brain, brain covering can give rise to this. Even sometimes if you have a severe infection like a dengue infection, even though there is no direct infection of the brain, you can have something called systemic inflammatory response syndrome that will make you lose consciousness. Apart from that, uh, if there are no infection as a part of the encephalopathy, you can have our body's own reaction called inflammatory disorders, uh, demyelinating disorders. That is your brain covering, the insulation of the brain gets affected by your own body when you are producing antibodies against your own body cells. So that is called demyelinating disorders. Even with that, you also lose consciousness. There are other group of disorders called autoimmune encephalitis wherein once again your body cells are triggered to produce autoantibodies against the nerve cells and then it is diffuse in nature, it affects the brain, it makes you lose your speech then slowly go into altered sensorium. So all these things can cause encephalopathy. So whenever a child uh, presents with altered consciousness, seizures, focal weakness, inability to swallow sometimes inability to breathe as well. So you have to, the doctor has to be a detective to look at what is the exact reason because the treatment will alter based on the exact treatment, exact uh, etiology what is causing this problem. So once you have a exact reason, many a times with all the investigations we may not know but almost in 70% to 80% of these children will, will get to know a reason and that might require a whole battery of investigations to be done including the blood test to look at an infection, look at electrolytes, look at uh, calcium, magnesium, sugars, metabolic parameters, blood gas, apart from that a EEG, lumbar puncture, a brain scan. So all these things will have to be used in varying combination so that we get to the bottom of the reason of the altered sensorium. So during this process on a presumed working diagnosis we start treating the child and if the child starts responding in next three to four days after start of treatment we know we are on the right track and some of the blood tests come back very quickly some of the blood tests take few days to come so during this period based on the working diagnosis and the condition of the child we keep treating this child and supporting this child in various manners including the breathing including the airway and the blood pressure sometimes are low so we'll have to support that all these things and if there are seizures we need to treat them. So it is a multidisciplinary teamwork while we are managing a child with encephalopathy and the, most of the children do come out quite well but some of the very sick ones can have significant long term issues that the doctors dealing with the child will be able to guide you on day to day basis. Thank you.